All measurements in physics, even of things such as density, area, and so on, are related to three basic quantities. These three basic quantities are length, mass, and time. As we see on our screen, we are having length with its SI unit being the meter, and that's its abbreviation, M. Mass, the SI unit for mass is kilogram, and that is the abbreviation for kilogram. And then we have time, which is in seconds. So all physical quantities are related to these three. However, there are other basic quantities, and these include the ampere, which is the SI unit for electricity. We have temperature, and its SI unit is Kelvin. We have amount of substance, uh, that is the mole. These basic quantities are also called the fundamental quantities, and they are defined as quantities which cannot be derived from other physical quantities. Putting the basic quantities aside, we also have what we call the derived quantities. Now, the derived quantities, on the other hand, are those which cannot be, which can be obtained from other quantities. Now, what we've just been looking at are the basic quantities, and these basic quantities, which are basically three, we sometimes also refer to them as fundamental quantities, and these are quantities that cannot be derived from other physical quantities. However, there are others, there are other quantities that can be derived from these physical quantities. Now, the quantities that can be derived from other physical quantities are what we are calling the derived quantities. In other words, derived quantities are those quantities which can be derived from other physical quantities. And examples of some of these are velocity, area, volume, pressure, speed, displacement, and so on and so forth. Now, we shall look at how we relate these quantities to the basic or the fundamental quantities that we've just been exploring in this video. So later on, we shall be looking at how we relate these quantities to the basic or the fundamental quantities. In this video, we get to look at the dimensions of a physical quantity. Now, the dimensions of a physical quantity are simply there to show how these other quantities, such as uh, volume, acceleration, how all those quantities relate themselves to the three fundamental quantities. In our previous video, we said that the three fundamental quantities are mass, length, and time. Therefore, dimensions of a physical quantity will serve to show how these physical quantities what we are calling the derived quantities, are related to the fundamental quantities of mass, length, and time. Now, when we are talking about dimensions, this is the symbol for dimensions. And as such, when we are looking at the dimensions of mass, length, and time, we shall represent them like this. The dimensions for mass is capital M. That is how it will be represented. The dimensions for length will be capital L, and then the dimensions for time is capital L. Likewise, I mean, is capital T. So, likewise, also, as we shall be exploring, looking for the dimensions of, like, acceleration, dimensions of mass, dimensions of velocity, we shall be writing the word velocity there, and we put these brackets outside. Now, this kind of language means that we are, we are looking for the dimensions of velocity. If we can put here dimensions of uh, acceleration, we put these brackets there. These brackets denote that actually we are interested in the dimensions of that physical quantity. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate this. We'll start with looking for the dimensions of area. Now, we know that area is equal to, we know that area is going to be equal to, uh, first of all, the area is length times width. Now, we need to relate this, this to the three fundamental basic quantities. So, Looking for the dimensions of area, it's going to be equal to length, because we are length times width. Now, the width is also a length, because the width, as far as the three uh, physical quantities of mass, length, and time are concerned, this width is also a length. So it means that the dimensions of area are L squared. Those are the dimensions of area. Let's get to velocity. Now, we all know that velocity is 
the rate at w of change of displacement. So looking for the dimensions of velocity, dimensions of velocity is going to be equal to our displacement divide that by time. So we look for the dimensions of displacement and what are the dimensions of time. So now displacement is actually a length according to the three fundamental quantities of mass, length and time displacement is a length so this is going to be L divide that by the time this is a, fundamental, a basic quantity which is T so it means that the dimensions of velocity are L T to the power negative 1 those are the dimensions for velocity let's look at volume now the dimensions of volume we know that uh, the dimensions of volume is given by length times width times height. Now what are the dimensions of length? What are the dimensions of width? The dimensions of height. We know that length is, that is length. Then multiply that by width. Width is also a length. And then also we know that height, height is also a length. So it means that the dimensions of volume are L cubed. That is how the dimensions, that is how volume relates to the three fundamental quantities of length, mass, and time. We all know the dimensions of acceleration. We know that acceleration, acceleration is velocity. over time by definition by definition we know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity so now what are the dimensions of velocity the dimensions of velocity are lt to the power negative one we got those ones before so for velocity it is lt to the power negative one divide that by the dimensions of time which is t so our answer here is going to become lt to the power negative two and those are the dimensions of acceleration looking at the dimensions of force we know that force is going to be the dimensions of force we have its mass multiply that by acceleration so what are the dimensions of mass mass is capital m Multiply that by acceleration. Now we already got for acceleration. Acceleration is LT to the power negative 2. So times LT to the power negative 2. So the dimensions for force therefore are MLT to the power negative 2. So that simply means that this is how force relates with the three basic, with the three fundamental quantities. Now what we have been doing is what we call dimensions of the physical quantity. And we say that these dimensions of a physical quantity simply serve to show how a physical quantity relates to the fundamental quantities of mass, length, and time. And what we have been do dealing with here, we've been looking at a few derived quantities such as acceleration, force, we've looked at volume, area, and velocity. All these are derived quantities. And we, what we've been doing in this video, we have been showing how these derived quantities are related to the fundamental quantities the fundamental physical quantities which are mass length and time in a nutshell we use dimensions of physical quantities also to check for the consistency of equations and we also use them to derive equations in our next video we shall be diving more into this phenomena In our previous video, we were able to show how the derived quantities relate with the fundamental quantities of mass, length, and time. And we were able to derive how area, volume, velocity, um, acceleration, and force, how they relate to the physical quantities. In our conclusion, we said that we use dimensions of a physical quantity also to check for the consistency of equations, and we also use it to derive equations.
In this video, we shall concern ourselves with how we use the dimensions of a physical quantity to check for the consistency of equations. This is Kisembo Academy and thanks for tuning in. Now, right in front of us we have an equation. S is equal to ut plus a half at squared. Most of you know it as the equation of motion. Now, we all know that S is equal to ut plus a half at squared is a correct equation. But we want to use dimensions of a physical quantity to check whether it is consistent. Now, when we are checking for the consistency of equations, we balance their units. It means that we are going to look at the left-hand side of the equation and we, they are, we see how the left-hand side is related to the three fundamental quantities. Then we also are going to look at the right-hand side of the equation and we see how that right-hand hand of the equation is related to the physical quantities, the, 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 the basic ones. Then if the two coincide, if the two are the same, then we shall conclude and say that the equation is dimensionally consistent. So let's look at this example. We have in on our left hand side we have s, which is distance. So that's why we said on, on the left hand side s is going to be equal to l. It's the length. It's s is distance. So the distance as far as the three basic quantities are concerned, distance is l. Then we shall look at our right hand side. The right hand side is this other part. Our duty is to find the dimensions on the right hand side to see if they are going to coincide with L. So our right hand side we have ut plus a half at squared. So we find the dimensions of u times the dimensions of t plus a half times the dimensions of acceleration times the dimension of time squared. And then from here we shall end up with u, we know that u is velocity. So velocity, the dimensions of velocity are lt to the power negative 1, which is that. So we look for the dimensions of displacement and what are the dimensions of time. So now displacement is actually L, divide that by the time. This is a, fundamental, a basic quantity which is t. So it means that the dimensions of velocity are lt to the power negative 1 times time, which is capital T, plus... A half the dimensions for acceleration is lt to the power negative 2 acceleration is velocity over time by definition by definition we know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity so now what are the dimensions of velocity the dimensions of velocity are lt to the power negative 1 we got those ones before so for velocity it is l t to the power negative 1 divide that by the dimensions of time which is t so our answer here is going to become l t to the power negative 2 multiply that by time squared which is t squared and of course l t to the power negative 1 times t this t and that t cancel because this is to the power negative 1 this is to the power 1 so they cancel and you remain with l and then that is going to be plus lt to the power negative 2 times t squared. This t squared and t to the power negative 2 will cancel out. And you remain with a half L. L plus a half L is going to give us 3 over 2 times L. 3 over 2 times L, this 3 over 2 is a constant. And as far as dimensions of a physical quantity are concerned, the constants are dimensionless. So because constants are dimensionless, it means that as far as the right hand is concerned, you remain with L. And so you realize that L and L, they are coinciding. The left hand side is L, the right hand side is also L. So you conclude by saying that since So we're going to our next example. We have V is equal to U cubed plus 80. Now V is equal to U cubed plus 80. Look at we have the left hand side and the right hand side. So the left hand side is V. V uh, is, is velocity. And the dimensions of velocity are LG to the power negative 1. We derived those in our previous video. Then we have those on the right hand side, which is this. Which is U cubed plus 80. So now we work towards finding the dimensions on the right hand side. 
the dimensions of the right hand side we have u cubed the dimensions of u cubed plus the dimensions of acceleration plus the di times the directions of time t the dimensions of velocity is going to be lg to the power negative one that's for velocity but since it's to the power three so this is this thing is to the power three plus the dimensions of acceleration which is lt to the power negative two this is acceleration times the dimensions of time which is capital t there then we go ahead and simplify this so this is the same as l to the power three times negative three times three is t to the power negative three that is plus l uh, l t to the power negative one cos t to the power negative two times t to the power one of course this t will cancel with one of those t's you remain with l t to the power negative one and when we add the, when you you can't simplify this further when you in our next step we shall still have that so you realize that as far as our right hand side is concerned we are having just this and on our left hand side we are having lg to the power negative one now since the units of our right hand side are not coinciding with those on our left hand side it means that this equation is not dimensionally consistent so in our conclusion we shall say We'll do one more example. We have v squared is equal to 8u squared plus 4as. We are checking for the dimensional consistency of this equation. So checking for the dimensional consistency of this equation, we have the left hand side, which is v, v squared. So the dimensions of v squared are definitely l t to the power negative 1. That This is for velocity. l t to the power negative 1 squared. So meaning that it's going to be l squared times t to the power negative 2 that is on the left hand side so what about this on the right hand side so let's look for the right hand side on our right hand side we have 8 u squared we need the dimensions of that plus 4 times the dimensions of acceleration times the dimensions of s the distance so now we'll go ahead and say that this is going to be 8 times now u is velocity velocity is l t to the power negative 1 this is squared plus 4 times the dimensions of acceleration which is l t to the power negative 2 times s s is distance so distance is l length so this is going to become l to the power 2 times t to the power negative 2 plus that is going to be this is 8 this is 4 times l times l is l squared so it's l squared times t to the power negative 2 so you have here 8 l squared t to the power negative 2 and that so this this plus that gives us 12 12 l squared t to the power negative 2 but as far as dimensions of physical quantities is concerned we know that constants are dimensionless so this is the same as l squared t to the power negative 2 so since the right hand side which is l squared t to the power negative 2 is the same as l squared t to the power negative 2 which is the left hand side it means that this equation is dimensionally consistent now we all know that as far as the equations of motion are concerned the third equation of motion is v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as but now this is a wrong equation as we all see, v squared is equal to 8u squared plus 4s. This is a wrong equation from our theory. But then when we try to analyze it using the dimensions of a physical quantity, we find that the equation is dimensionally consistent. So in other words, it's dimensionally, dimensionally consistent, but it is having wrong values of 8. And for those are the wrong constants. Now, why is this so? Why, why is this thing consistent yet it's having wrong values? Now, this is consistent, yet it's having wrong values because 8 and 4 are dimensionless. 
Therefore, this brings us to this conclusion that when we are doing dimension analysis, we can use it to eliminate wrong equations, but we cannot use it to prove the correctness of an equation. And why is this so? Because you cannot use it to prove whether the correctness of factors or constants such as a half, eight, four, pi, etc. are correct. You can't use it. So that's the conclusion here. We can use dimensions of a physical quantity to eliminate wrong equations. But then, we cannot use it to prove the correctness of an equation. Please take note of that. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. The velocity v of sound traveling along a road made of a material of Young's modulus alpha and density rho is given by this. Show that the formula is dimensionally consistent. So of course dimensional, to show that this formula is dimensionally consistent means that we're supposed to get the dimensions of the quantities on the left hand side, get the dimensions on the right hand side, the dimensions of the quantities on the right hand side, and if the two quantities are the same, it means that formula is dimensionally consistent. Now, since our question is telling us to show that the formula is dimensionally consistent, it means that here we are simply supposed to be showing that this the dimensions of V are the same as the dimensions of this whole thing. So we'll get started with what is on our left hand side. So on our left hand side we have V and, and the dimensions of V are L T to the power negative 1. These are the dimensions of V. Now of course how L T to the power negative 1 comes about is something that we did in our previous videos. Maybe for some of us that have just joined us I'll play that. Let's go back to how we get the dimensions for velocity. Dimensions of velocity dimensions of velocity is going to be equal to our displacement divide that by time so we look for the dimensions of displacement and what are the dimensions of time so now displacement is actually a length according to the three fundamental quantities of mass length and time displacement is a length so this is going to be l Divide that by the time. This is a, fundamental, a basic quantity which is t. So it means that the dimensions of velocity are L t to the power negative 1. Those are the dimensions for velocity. We'll come back from that flashback. So that's uh, how we get v, the dimensions of velocity. So now, we, this is our left hand side. So let's go ahead and look at the right hand side. On our right hand side, we are having uh, alpha over that. So we need to find the dimensions of alpha, the dimensions of this. Now the dimensions of alpha, which so happens to be, according to our question, the dimensions of alpha. Alpha is actually Young's modulus. So what's the formula for Young's modulus? So we know that alpha, which so happens to be Young's modulus, is the ratio of stress to strain and we know that stress is given by force over area divide that by strain strain is given by extension over original area it's actually extension over original length So we know that force is mass times acceleration, divide that by area, multiply that by original length, we make, find the reciprocal of this. Original length is just in a length, divide that by extension. So the dimensions of this, the dimensions of that, the dimension of this, the dimension of length, the dimension of that. This is given by, so we have force is equal to mass, that is the dimensions of mass is capital M. The dimensions of acceleration is LT to the power negative 2. Then divide that by the dimensions of area. 
that is given by area is equal to length times width. So it means it is L squared. Multiply that by this is original length, which is a length over extension. Extension is also in terms of length. So of course, definitely here, it's going to turn out to be this L can cancel with that L. This L will cancel with one of the L's here. We remain with M L to the power negative one and then T to the power negative two. So these are the dimensions of Young's modulus. Now that we have found the dimensions of Young's modulus, it's time for us to find the dimensions of density. I'll fix that right here. So to find the dimensions of density, we know that density is equal to mass over volume. We know that mass is capital M over volume. Volume is length times width times height, so that is L to the power 3. So this becomes M L to the power negative 3. So if I may, so this has been more like side work. In this side work, we've been able to find the dimensions of Young's modulus, which we got as that. Then we were also able to find the dimensions of density, which we got as that. So to come back to our original question, which happens to be this, we got left hand side, the, the, the dimensions of the left hand side, the velocity was L to the power negative 1. Now the dimensions on the right hand side is the, under the square root of that over that. So it means that the dimensions on the right hand side here, if I may continue, it's going to be uh, under the square root of the dimensions of alpha, which we got as this. So it's going to become m l to the power negative 1, t to the power negative 2, divide that by the dimensions of density. We got the dimensions of density as this, m l to the power negative 3. So this is m l to the power negative 3. And so definitely this is going to be, this M will cancel with that M. Uh, th this is L and that is L. Uh, we, we subtract the powers. So this becomes negative 1 minus negative 3. We remain with uh, under the square root of L, L to the power 2. And this definitely is, remains T to the power negative 2. Also, of course, now this is going to become... This is the same as saying L to T to the power negative 2. And this, since it's under the square root, this is to the power a half. If we are to multiply a half to all through here, a half times 2 is 1. So it remains as L to the power 1. Then negative 2 times a half, negative 2 times a half is going to remain as T to the power negative 1. Now you realize that at first... Uh, the dimensions of velocity were L to the power negative 1, and it's the same as L t to the power negative 1. So we shall conclude by saying that, that since the dimensions on the, right, on the left hand side are equal to the dimensions of the right hand side, therefore this equation right here is dimensionally consistent. You can try out this number. If you need me to make a video on this number, the solution, please let me know in the comments below. In our previous videos, we concluded that we use dimension of a physical quantity to check for the consistency of equations, and we can also use it to derive equations. So in one of our previous videos, still, we explored on how we use dimensional analysis to check for consistency of equations. In this video, we are going to concern ourselves with how we use this dimensional analysis to derive equations. This is Kisembo Academy, and thanks for tuning in. To use dimensions of a physical quantity to derive equations, we use this method of dimensional analysis to derive it, the equations only and only if 
we have an idea about the factors upon which a given quantity depends on. For example, given this question of ours, we are having the quantity t, which we are calling the periodic, the periodic time. And according to the question, we have an idea about what uh, this quantity depends on. It's going to depend on length, which is L. It's depending on mass m and acceleration due to gravity. The question goes that consider the oscillation of a single pole pendulum. The period t, which is that, may depend on mass m, which is that, times the length l, which is that, and acceleration due to gravity, g. Find the values of x, y, and z. Of course, if you're finding the values of x, y, and z, hence you are finding the formula. Now, first of all, we will begin the working by removing that proportionality sign. When we remove that proportionality side to introduce equal signs here, it means we are going to introduce a constant of proportionality and that constant of proportionality is what we are calling k here. That t is going to be equal to k times l to the power x times m to the power y times g to the power z. So we shall look at our left hand side. The dimensions on our left hand side, in our left hand side we have periodic time t. So on our left hand side it's going to be t, capital T. Those are the dimensions of our left hand side. So we'll get to look at our right hand side. On our right hand side, which is this, we are having k, which is a constant. And we know that constants are dimensionless. So it is going to, it won't have the, 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 the signs. It won't have any dimensions times L. Now L is the length to the power x. L to the power x times m, which is the mass to the power y. Mass is capital M times the dimensions of gravity to the power z. Now we know that the dimensions of L are capital L to the power x times the dimensions of m. This is mass according to our question. So it is mass m to the power y. Multiply that by gravity acceleration due to gravity. The dimensions for acceleration are lt to the power negative 2. That's all to the power z. So in our next step, we are going to simplify this further. So it's, it is L to the power X times M to the power Y times L to the power Z times T to the power negative 2Z. Now if you realize this, we are having this. We can join this and that. So joining that and to that, we realize that on our right hand side, we remain with K, which is the constant times L. Now law of indices, L times L, same base, we add the power, so it's going to be X plus Z, times M to the power Y, which is that, times T to the power negative Z, which is that. So this is our right hand side, and our left hand side is right there. So, from there we proceed with our working, and we shall say that, that our right hand side, which is K, into L to the power X plus Z, times M, which is, to the power y times t to the power negative 2z is going to be equal to, this is our right hand side, it's going to be equal to our left hand side, which is t. So, for us to be able to get these values of x, y, and z, we are going to equate the powers on both sides to get these values. So, we shall start with the, the, the quantities. We have L this side and L that side. We look at the powers of L this side. The powers of L this side are X plus Z. So we shall say X plus Z is going to be equal to the powers of L this side. Now this side we do not have any L. So is equal to zero. So that's equation one. Then we have M, the powers of M. Now the powers of M this side, we have Y. Y is going to be equal to the powers of M this side. This side we do not have M. So it is equal to zero. Then we have t. The powers of t this side is negative 2z. So we have negative 2z is equal to the powers of t this side here t is to the power 1. So it is equal to 1. This is equation 2. This is equation 3. So we use these three equations to, to find the values of x, y, and z. And from these equations we already know that we have already found that y is equal to zero. So you already know that y is 0. Then you look at, uh, if you come and look at this, 
we have negative 2z is equal to 1. Therefore, z is going to be negative a half. So y is 0, z is negative a half. Then we can get the value of x. x plus z is equal to 0. We know that z is negative a half, so it's going to be x uh, minus a half is equal to 0. Therefore, x is going to be a half. So from what we've got, we see that our value of y is 0. So it's, this is going to be k, k times L. L to the power x, x is a half. Times m is y. Our value of m is, I mean, our value of, of its mass, our value of y is 0, m to the power 0. Times our value of z, our value of z is negative a half. So it's negative a half. So from there, we shall formulate our equation. So it's going to become k times our, the value of L, L to the power half. We know that any power to the power 0 is 1, so the, that this is times 1, times g to the power negative a half, which is the same as 1 over g to the power half. So our equation will become, this is going to give us L to the power half over g to the power half. That is t is equal to k. And uh, this is the same as saying the square root of L over g. And that is the equation. For a streamlined flow of a non-viscous incompressible fluid, the pressure P, this is the pressure we're talking about, P, at any point is related to the height H and the velocity V by this equation. So we are having the height H and the velocity V and that is the pressure. So we have pressure right there. We have height, we have V, which so happens to be the velocity. Now where A, A B, and D, A, B, and D are constants. This sine rho is the density of the fluid. This right here is the density of the fluid, and G is the acceleration due to gravity. Given that the equation is dimensionally consistent, find the dimensions of the constants A, B, and D. So in this question, we are required to find the dimensions of the constants A, B, and D in this equation. So now to begin with, first of all, there is a very big, there is something major we need to take note of. And this is that if two or more quantities are added or subtracted, they must have the same dimensions. So if I may interpret this statement to apply it to our question here, if you look at this here, we are having P minus A. A is a constant. Now, the mere fact that these two are subtracted together it means that the dimensions of p which is pressure are the same as the dimensions of this constant that we do not know here we are having h minus b in brackets b is a constant h according to our question is representing height so it means the dimensions of height are the same as the dimensions of this constant b likewise v squared minus d these are being subtracted we know that v is velocity so the dimensions of v are the same dimensions of d this is how, this is what is consistent with this. In dimensions, or when we are doing dimensional analysis, we should know that when two or more quantities are added or subtracted, then they must have the same dimensions. And since these ones are being subtracted in brackets, it means that the dimensions of pressure is the same as the dimensions of this. So to go ahead and find the dimensions of A, B, and D, like our question is requesting us to do, we will start analyzing bit by bit. So right here we have P minus A. The dimensions of P minus A. So, so since we know that the dimensions of pressure are supposed to be the dimensions of A, so let's go ahead and first find the dimensions of P, which is pressure. We know that the dimensions of pressure, pressure is going to be equal to force over area and we know that force is equal to mass times acceleration divide that by area which is that 
and then we go ahead and find we know that mass so the dimensions of mass so the dimensions of mass is capital M multiply that by the dimensions of acceleration now we know that acceleration the dimensions of acceleration are L2 to the power negative 2 divide that by the dimensions of area area is length times width and we know that length times width length is a, a length times width width is also a length so this is L squared so you will find that this decomposes to M of course this L this L will cancel with one of those L's and you remain with uh, M and T to the power negative 2 divide that by L this ends up becoming M L to the power negative 1 T to the power negative 2 now since these are the dimensions of pressure therefore uh, the dimensions of P minus A are going to be the same as M L negative 1 T negative 2 and since these two are being subtracted and we know that if two or more quantities are added or, sub added or subtracted they must have the same dimensions it means that the dimensions of a are also going to be m l to the power negative one t to the power negative two and that those are the dimensions of a so we'll go ahead and find the dimensions of b now to find the dimensions of b since it is h minus b we know that this h and b these ones have the same dimension since they are being subtracted together now height h is height and you know that height the dimensions of i height are l uh, then it means that the dimensions of h minus b are also going to be l hence the dimensions of b meaning they are is, is that so for b that was it so now let's get the dimensions of d we know that dimensions of D is V squared. We have V squared minus D. We want the dimensions of that. So since the dimensions of V are supposed to be the same as the dimensions of this, we know this is V squared, right? So we first find the dimensions of V squared, which is velocity. We know that velocity, the dimensions of velocity are L T to the power negative one squared. So this is going to become L squared T to the power negative 2 times 2 is negative 2. So uh, this only means therefore, since these are the dimensions of V squared, so it means that the dimensions of D are also going to be the same. L squared T to the power negative 2, and that's the answer. So that's how we get the dimensions of the constants of A, B, and D. And it is all coming from this very fundamental fact that if two or more quantities are added or subtracted, they must have the same dimensions. We will do one more worked example that requires us to apply this truth further. We're having an equation that in the equation P plus A over V squared, close brackets into V minus B is equal to RT. This is an equation for a real gas. Find the dimensions of the constants A and B. So we are having constants here constant a and then the constant b find the constants a and b where p is the pressure of the gas this is the pressure of the gas v is the volume of the gas and r is the molar gas constant and t is the temperature since this p and this term these two are being added together it means that the dimensions of p are going to be the same as the dimensions of that whole thing right likewise here the dimensions of v are going to be the same as the dimensions of b so let's begin with this one we know that p according to our question is representing pressure of the gas p so it means for us to get the dimensions of p must be equal to they must be the same as the dimensions of this whole thing of the a over v squared and we are interested in finding the dimensions of a so uh, if we are to make any subject of the formula, it means uh, the dimensions of P, this is going to become the dimensions of A over the dimensions of V squared. This A, when we make A the subject of the formula, this is going to become equal to the dimensions of P 
multiply that by when v squared multiplied on both sides it means it's going to be the dimensions of v squared so for us to get the dimensions of a this is the thing so this is going to become um, the dimensions of p which is pressure we know that pressure is equal to force over area force is going to be mass times acceleration over the area this is going to be equal to ma mass is capital m acceleration is lt to the power negative 2 divide that by area which is l squared and this is going to become m l to the power negative 1 t to the power negative 2 so for this it's going to become m l to the power negative 1 t to the power negative 2 multiply that by v squared now v squared according to our question here this v is standing for volume of the gas so if it is volume we know that volume is given by uh, length times width times height which is going to be volume l that is l times l times height is also a length so this is l cubed so this is volume squared which is l cubed that's the constant for volume squared so this means it's going to become uh, m l to the power negative 1 t to the power negative 2 multiply that by 3 times 2 is 6 l to the power 6 so the dimensions of a in this case are going to become m times uh, we have two l's l times l of course same base we add the powers negative 6 plus that this becomes l to the power 5 then here we have t to the power negative 2 and these are the dimensions of a then we'll go ahead and find the dimensions of b to find the dimensions of b this is v minus b so it means that the dimensions of v must be the same as the dimensions of b since they are being subtracted so it means that the dimensions of v should be the same as the dimensions of b and according to our questions we've been told that v stands for volume you have to be very careful what the letters stand for because sometimes v stands for velocity but in this case it is volume so since v is for volume we know that volume is l cubed we already discovered here that v is l cubed so it means that the dimensions for volume is l cubed is going to be b so therefore the dimensions for b in this case are l cubed and in so doing we have answered our question this brings us to the end of this video thanks for watching feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe for Ksembo Academy, this is Anwar Brangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.